So first of all, we, you know, we've looked at five elements in the lumbar spine, but I want to emphasize that the lumbar spine is, is that which rules your chi body. You know, if you don't have enough chi, then we, we have to be paying attention to the processes of the lumbar spine, the processes of the kidney. Um, and the lumbar spine, therefore, is really sort of uh, all ruled by the kidney. It's all an extension of the, of the kidney. But remember, we, we think of the kidney as water, but that's really limiting because the kidney is the root of the yin and yang of the energy of the body. Therefore, it kind of has all the elements in it. We certainly, we talk about the kidneys as water, but then in the same breath, we talk about kidney fire, ming men fire. And for many practitioners, that's more important than the kidneys as water. Uh, and I'm going to argue that actually, maybe all five of these elements expressed in the lumbar spine are simply the elements in relation to the kidney chi. Um, and the, the sacrum reflecting more the jing. Right, well, that's sort of fundamental colors of the gene. So what are the outer, um, outer bladder channel points in this area? Well, we've got bladder 51 at the level of um, bladder 22, and that's Huang Men 51. And um, let's talk a little bit about, about the Huang points, because it's just a really interesting kind of thing if you're an acupuncturist. If you're not an acupuncturist, hopefully it's spurring your interest. <laughs> so, the, the Huang is, is an ancient Chinese term um, that was often combined with Gao. So you have this term Gao Huang, but you can also have Huang by itself and Gao by itself. And what Huang and Gao refer to is, as far as anybody can really tell, um, Huang refers to the membranes, like the peritoneal membrane, uh, in the belly, and the, you know, the, maybe even the pericardial membrane, and the plur pleural cavity, and the sort of membrane lining um, organ system of the body. And the connective tissue which, which forms these, um, these cavities, like the, the pelvic cavity, and the peritoneal cavity, the retroperitoneal cavity, and so on, um, that connective tissue actually transmits information and chi. And anybody who's, who's been into body work, massage, rolfing, craniosacral starts to understand that that's actually really interesting from a point of view of healing. We want to actually get into that connective tissue layer. So the ancient Chinese, I think, were pretty tuned into this. And they, they, they generally called it the huang um, for the, the regions a little bit more below the diaphragm and the gao for the regions above the diaphragm that are the connective tissue regions. And they then identified points which can control or heal the, these, these membranes. And so we see a series of um, three or four points that are specific to that. The first being gao huang shu. So gao huang shu is at the level of um, your fourth thoracic vertebra, but three soon out. Um, just for those of you that are clueless, not, I'm not saying you're clueless, but I'm going to use you as a model. <laughs> for those of you that, excuse me, clueless, that's very pejorative. For those of you that haven't yet fully mastered Chinese medicine, I'm going to show you what that is. Um, you want to go down about um, to the fourth, yeah, 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 take yeah, the fourth thoracic vertebra, the level of T4, mm -hmm. and then straight out to the, to the scapular border, right? T4, out to the scapular border. This is Gao Huang Shu, bladder 43. Okay. Um, it's on the outer bladder line, and it's interesting that a bunch of these points that regulate the membranes are on the outer bladder line. And energetically, it corresponds to the triple burner. I'll explain a little bit more why when we get to the thoracic spine, but energetically, it corresponds a lot to the triple burner. So that's, that's one of our first membrane points. The next one down is bladder 51. Thanks. Actually, let's keep your head. So bladder 51 is at the level of L1, but again, on the outer border of the paraspinal muscles. Right? Up a little bit. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure I'm there, but I'm guessing. Do you get that? Level of L1 at the outer border of the paraspinal muscles. And that's Huang Men, bladder 51. So bladder 51, thanks, is at the, is at the um, same level as, as the triple burner control point. Um, bladder 22. And you know, because we live in a, uh, an age where we have to deal with cancer very, you know, very, in a very real way, we have to really sort of pay attention to cancer, 
Um, I think these points have more significance than they, than they perhaps uh, used to have. They should have more significance. Um, I'll, get, I'll come back to that in a sec. Let's just, let's just complete the picture. So we've got Gao Huang Shu at the level of T4 on the inner border of the scapula. We've got Huang Men, the gate of the Huang, at the level of um, L1. And then we've got Bao Huang, which is at the level of the uh, water point down, down here at the sacrum. Right? These are three points on the outer bladder line that seem to correspond to this idea of membranes and fascial and wrapping, fascial envelopes and fascial wrapping. I think it's important that we know about um, these three points, bladder 43, bladder 51, bladder 53, as potential regulators of the membranes for the following reason. Back when the Neijing was being written, probably about one person in 100 and or 150 got cancer. We don't really know, but cancer was pretty damn rare back then, presumably. Um, we do know that 150 years ago, it was quite rare. Because 150 years ago, they kept good hospital admission records in many, many hospitals in Europe and America. And you can see, people were not coming in and dying from cancers very much. When I was first studying medicine, your lifetime risk of cancer was like one in nine or something like that. And then it was one in seven when I got into my early 20s. And then, you know, it kind of went up somewhere. And then Time magazine announced, we're winning the war on cancer. And it was like one in four. Right. And then, then it went to one in three. And now it's like almost one in two. Do you, do you notice a trend here? <laughs> one in 150 to one in two in about 150 years, right? That means we're all um, needing to be aware, especially healthcare providers, of the potential that we could actually undo cancer before it manifests. And of course, that's what we're trying to do with Chinese medicine. We're trying to get to the template system, the qi body, to, to rectify what manifests on, in, in the physical body. Question? What's the purpose of a spirit body, exactly? What is its purpose? Like, what is it, yeah, what is it there for? Do you mean the ling, the, 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 the more higher spiritual level body? Yeah, the one that's been given to us, not so much the, you said one that wasn't ours personal. Oh, you mean the, the universal body, the Tao body. But not that one, the other one. The one. next one down, yeah. the Ling body. What is its purpose? Yeah, like what's it, yeah. It relates to, um, I'm going to come back to cancer in a sec. It relates to a little bit what, what the, the psychologist Carl Gustav Jung called the collective unconscious. Oh, okay. It's a vast, vast repository of human experience and non-human experience. It, re it's, it relates to what Jesus talked about when he said, in my Father's house there are many mansions. Right? It's a, a, a realm, as much as it's a body, right? because it's from the point of view of our physical bodies, it's hard to even distinguish it as a body, but it is nonetheless connected to us in a way. Mm -hmm. You could call it a body. It's a, it's a realm um, which some people have also referred to as uh, the story, storage place of the Akashic records. The idea being that everything that's ever happened to any sentient being is stored there. Mm -hmm. um, it's also basically where all the different realms of the afterlife are contained. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in Chinese, traditional Chinese thinking and also in, uh, is it Dante's Inferno? Has, how many realms of heaven and hell are there in Dante's Inferno? Is it nine? <laughs> it's a bunch. In Taoism, it's also considered to be nine realms. In Buddhism, they've got it too. So, so, from the point of view of being in that realm, this one looks really, really small and limited and tiny. Kind of. Once you're in the Ling realm, um, there's very, very, very vast expanse of experiences and consciousnesses and landscapes and places. And so it's not really something we can talk about very easily. Yeah. But there it is. Is that the bliss that you're trying to get when people talk about the consciousness? No, not really. Bliss is just that, that embodied state of consciousness. But the Ling is... The Ling is the spiritual realm, or the, or, the, or the spiritual body, or sometimes called the collective unconscious, or you could call it, the, uh, what's some other names for it? But every, every culture has a different set of names for these. And also, once you get into the Shen body and the Ling body, you can start to subdivide them in various ways that makes this whole map irrelevant. 
So I'm going to move back to cancer because I don't. Can, can you change your health in the lane? I mean, Say that again. Can you meditate and change the lane where I'll change the way you're healthy? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Good question. Mm -hmm.